Hello, today we are going over a fun technique called paper piecing. It is a great way to add dimension to your project as well as use up some of your leftover scraps. Today I'm going to be using a stamp called Seasonal Sweeties by Honeybee Stamp. It is the perfect stamp for doing this technique. Uh, I find paper piercing works great for clothing on people, but you can also use it for flowers and other designs also. It's all in your creativity. So for this one, I'm going to start coloring this parts that I'm not going to paper piece. And that will include her face, the dog, her little tights, and her shoes. Uh, paper piecing is usually easier when you choose bigger areas to do versus these tiny little areas. So here I am. I'm just going to color in her complexion first. The whole technique is basically you'll stamp your, your first image and then you'll put also the other images on the pieces of scrap that you're going to use for her clothing. And then you will cut them out, the pieces you will need, and then you will layer them on. So I saved time. I cut mine ahead of time so that you guys didn't have to sit there watching me fussy cut little pieces of clothing out. And we're going to just color her in. I've been a little delayed in doing this video. I caught a bad little spring cold and I'm still getting over it, but I'm better now. So I decided to get this voiceover done for you guys so I can get this video out because as we all know, the March Hero Arts Kit is coming out and I need to start getting ready for that. So here I am coloring her little pug dog beside her. These stamps are just adorable. If you haven't ever purchased any honeybee stamps, they are very cute. A lot of her stuff is just like this. And they're so fun to color. If you like Cobra coloring, if you like even even watercolor, I've seen these done in watercolor. They're they're so cute. And the spaces are really good size, so they're really easy to color. So I am almost done coloring her. I'm going to color her hair now. All right, so now I'm just going to do some highlights in her hair. I'm going to blend those in. Alright, so now I'm going to come in with my Ranger Multimedium. I got a big cup of it. And a paintbrush. Um, you can do this with a glue pen, any other type of glue, but as long as it, you can lay in a thin layer. I just chose to do it this way because I had that on hand. And I cut out her her raincoat but I also cut out a little piece of his umbrella because like I said it's easier to do this in big pieces because you can always layer the little pieces on top as I'm going to do here with his little umbrella and now I'm going to also put in her little scarf And now I'm getting ready to do her umbrella. As you see, this process is really easy. I think the longest part of this whole process is um, the cutting out, the fussy cutting out the little pieces. The gluing part is super easy. Now I'm going to let that dry. Oops, wait, I had also cut out her pocket. Let me get her pocket in. Later on, I will be cutting these out in, together with the little mini umbrella, but I just, this one, I actually had not done that, so. Like I said, bigger pieces are usually easier to lay down, too, so if you can cut them together in bigger pieces, do it. And I did this a few times. As you see with these little designs, there's one I just did for you guys, and there's a purple one also. 
as you see, this process is really quick and simple. So now I'm going to go over these umbrellas with a gray Copic, just to give the umbrellas a little bit of shadow. And that's a great way. Just find a light gray or a medium gray Copic, and you can add some shadow to your design and still have that design show poking through, which is really fun. As you can see, you can still see this plaid, even though I'm covering it with a gray Copic. That's why I wouldn't do it in black, because you just want to show shadow. You don't want to be covering it all over. Though I did end up doing it on this one, because the, the uh, blue plaid was just so dark. So I'm going to go over that with actually a black on that one. So I'm going to keep on going over the shadowing of this. You see I'm shadowing each design as I go. Alright, so there are those three little designs. Aren't they adorable? Alright, so now I've also done one that came with this kit also that had the little girl and her cat jumping in leaves. And I thought they were just adorable. So I'm going to color in all the leaves as well as the parts that we are not going to paper piece, just like I did with the other card. So I'm starting with these leaves and I'm doing reds, orange, and greens, just like you would see in autumn. That's one thing I really loved about these. They were super sweet. I actually got a stamp that was a little bit of a dud, and you will see that later on in the video. One of the sentiments were a little not cut correctly, which is fine. Sometimes when you get stamps like that, it's easy to fix them. And I'll show you how I fix that when I stamp it later. Now I'm getting her little legs colored in. Like I said, paper piecing is usually very well for clothing and stamps that you have a figure in, whether it be a lady, a guy. But it also does lend itself to doing flowers. I've seen a lot of beautiful mixed media pieces that have their flowers done by paper piecing different textures of flower. Each layer has a different color. I've seen daisies done this way. It, it can be really beautiful if you do it that way too. It's all what you want to do for your image that you're trying to put out. All right, so you, as you see, I'm finishing up her hair here. And then we put some shadowing in there. And I'm just doing a quick color just to show you. A lot of my other ones I had previously colored already. That way they were ready. A couple of them were goof ups that I colored and I messed up on. Great way to cover up a bad coloring job is this paper piecing. If you ever color something and it didn't come out right, instead of wasting the image, just go over the area with some paper and make a paper piecing design instead. It's a great way to make use of things that you mess up on. I mean, it happens to all of us. Alright, so I'm coloring the little cat. Because, of course, I can't really paper piece him too much. There he is. And I almost forgot her boots. Let's go back and do her boots. All right, now we're ready for the paper piecing. So let's get our, our glue ready here. And then we'll start doing the same process I did before. I'm going to just lay a layer of glue down. And I had made the mistake of cutting her scarf out of this coat and so leaving it there because I could have just layered the scarf over there so I'm going to have to try to lay this out really straight so there's not a white piece showing through. 
but to show you it can be done. It's just a little bit more tedious. There we go. Make sure they line up well. And now I also did her little pockets. And like I said, it sometimes it's better to do bigger designs, but you can do your little designs too if you are patient enough to line them up. There we go. Isn't she sweet? All right, and I did three of these also, as you see here. And there's that one. Now, I also got the matching dies to go with these stamps. So I'm going to actually cut all these out so that I can put them on my cards, put some fun backgrounds behind them. And that's what we'll be doing next after I get all these pieces cut out. I want to start making our fun backgrounds for our cards. There's the purple one. And like I said, I have all the dyes for this because I even have it for these little itty bitty leaves, which is fun. But yeah, isn't this adorable? Let me lay these out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run them all through my die cut or if I'm going to have to do them a little bit at a time. But I'm going to try. You can see I even have the most itty bittiest leaf in it. Alright, so now I didn't show the paper cutting of all that because that took a lot longer than I should have. So now we're going to go into making our panels. First panel, I wanted to split the seam. And I did not use masking tape, which I probably should have because my paper was sliding everywhere. Um, so I would definitely recommend using tape, which I will use in the next panels I do in this technique. But it's okay because this is going to be in the background of our Part. So it doesn't really matter how straight it is. So now I'm going to go in with, I believe it was the Spice Marmalade next. The first one was Fossilized Amber. And I'm taking out my Distress Ink Cubes. This is Abandoned Coral. I love buying these in the little cubes because you can get so much more bang for your buck. As fun as it is to buy the big ink pads, they take up a lot of space. And honestly, as a crafter, sometimes we don't have enough space to have all the big pads. I'm hoping sooner or later we'll get the Distress Oxides in the small ink pads too. Now the next one I'm going to do is going to be the mode Lawn on the bottom. And I'm going to try to line it up as much as I can with my paper. As you see, this is my scrap paper from coping, doing some Copic coloring. It's blending my colors. All right, and I'm just going to kind of clean up that line that I messed up on. And it won't matter because everything will cover it up at the end. All right, so the next one. I am not going to worry about a line. I'm just going to go in with some colors. So I'm going to sponge in with my blending tool some fossilized amber. And I'm just going to go through as much of the card as I can. Now coming in with the spice marmalade, same color family as the previous card. I guess you can figure out which ones I'm going to be using this color family for. And next, of course, is the abandoned coral. And like I said, I'm not going to break this up. I'm just going to go crazy and make a fun background in the back. Alright. Now I'm going to spritz that with some water and let it dry. 
Now the next technique, I am doing the old fun. Just laying the paper over wet distressed ink. I love doing this. This is so much fun. And you get such unique panels by the time you're done. So I'm going to just lay this on there. And as you see, I don't think I have enough red. So I'm going to go back in with some of the abandoned coral just to give some more red to it. And there we go. I'm going to let that dry. All right. So now I'm going to go into my blues. For this, I'm going to be using Mermaid Lagoon, I believe it was. Or was it Salty Ocean? I can't say. And I'm just going to go around this panel as much as I can. Now I'm going to go in my next color, which I think this one was actually Salty Ocean. And as you see, this time I used tape. Worked a lot better, though it did end up slipping a little bit. All right, now we're going to go in with our chip sapphire. So I remove that tape and I try to realign it on the top as much as I can. And now I'm going to go in with my hickory smoke. Oops, and see like I told you, it slid, slides a little bit. Apparently my tape did not adhere good the second time around. I'm going to lay this down on the bottom. And to give it some shadow, I'm going to go in with my black soot. And there we go. And that will be that panel. All right, so I'm going to spray this down with a little bit of water just to give some that let that distress ink react. Now I'm going to wipe down my panel. All right, so for the next panel, I am going to once again tape down the bottom. And I always find a good technique for when you're taping these kind of panels is to actually put your masking tape down on your pant first, just to give it a little less stick. And I had freeformed a cut of some clouds from a piece of scrap, and I'm just going to lightly go over it with the broken china on the bottom. This is a great technique for making clouds, or even I've used it also for making snow banks in the past too because it only adds a shadow where the snowbank or the cloud would be hitting. But this technique is real fun. As you can see, I have something stamped on the other end of the scrap. Like I said, gotta reuse stuff. I'm gonna do one more on the bottom line of this. There we go. And now I'm going to realign that on the bottom. And I'm going to go in with my hickory smoke. And I'm just going to lightly lay down this. And there's this panel. This panel I'm not going to add any water because I don't want to blend what I had made the clouds with. Now the last panel, I'm going to repeat what I did with the orange, and I'm just going to lay some colors of ink down on my mat. And we're going to do exactly what we did with that orange panel, but this time with the blue. Isn't this fun? I like doing this technique a lot, because like I said, you get a different thing every time you do it. And I felt that we needed a little bit of gray. So I'm going to add some hickory smoke to it. There we go. 
and I'm going to quite clean up my mat a little bit. There we go. All right, so now let's line out our cards. I chose some fun patterned card forms for the back. And now I'm going to take out my Stamp Perfect. I have someone asking, where did you get the Stamp Perfect? It looks like a Misty, but it's not. Well, for a while, Hampton Arts was making a kind of Misty replica. Sadly, they had to cease and desist because my sweet Petunia put a copyright on them. And so they're no longer available in the U.S. I was lucky enough to be one of the few people that actually got one before the hits happened. I'm a little sad because I really love it. And I probably would have bought the larger one that they were making too. So far, I can only find them in the U.K. and I just cannot afford that shipping. So now I'm going to stamp in. Let's weather this storm. Or we will weather the storm in black. Tuxedo Black ink. And I'm going to go over it a couple of times just to make this really black. After all, we're doing this on watercolor paper, so it doesn't pop as quickly because it absorbs that ink in very well. All right. Now, for the rest of this, I am actually going to heat emboss the last word on black cardstock. So here I am with the black cardstock, getting it lined up in my stamp perfect. Let me get this more into frame for you guys. I want to go over it with my anti-static tool. And I got the word together. And I'm going to heat emboss this in Recollections. No, actually, let me take that back. It's going to be the Hero Arts Detailed Silver. I decided to do these in silver. And here's my coffee filter. This is a great way for when you're embossing. Um, just use a coffee filter. It makes it so much easier. All your stuff goes in there and it's easier to filter back into the bottle. And I heat set that. Now the fun thing is I also got the little word dies for this too. So I'm going to cut this out with the word die. And here it is. And look at how perfect that is. Isn't that fun? It gives it just a nice little shadow of that black. When I saw this kit, I was like, give it to me. <laughs> I need it. As you can see, this is a piece that I actually messed up on the coloring on, so I did reuse it. Oops, and I got a little glue on my mat. It's all right. Get that off later. I need to find a new mat that has some grid designs on it. I'm currently looking to see one, so hopefully in the near future you'll see that in a video. All right, so I'm going to adhere that down. Make sure it took real good. You know what? I'm going to get some scrap paper, and that way I'll keep on gluing my mat. All right, so here is the word together. We're going to put that right on there. All right, now I'm going to get my craft foam into the picture here because I'm going to raise this card up, give it some dimension. And I'm going to make sure I put a good amount on because this is watercolor paper. That way it sticks really well. All right, now let's get some. Oops. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get my sentiment in my card first. I almost did a big boo-boo. All right. So I chose Sunny Days Ahead for the inside sentiment. And I'm also going to do that in the tuxedo black. Let me just make sure we line this up. All 
I gotta say, having a stamp positioner has made me a better stamper because you can go back over and clean up your stamping. Alright, so now that's done, I'll let that dry and I'll finish up my gluing my craft foam panel. Sometimes I get ahead of myself, but like I said, I've been going through a cold and my brain might not still be there yet. Alright, so stick this on there. Make sure we got it going the right way. Alright, make sure that it right get all that embossing powder off there. Alright, so to embellish this, I'm gonna take some new little gems that we just had come into the store. These are beautiful little chessboard white crystal rhinestones. They are so pretty. Sadly, can't see them very well when they're this far away, but I will let you see them closer up after we're done gluing them on the card. They are super sweet. We just added them to the shop. They are so fun. I like them because they're different than the classic rhinestone and they sparkle really pretty. I like trying to find things that are semi-unique to add to the store because I know you guys can find rhinestones anywhere. But I want to find things that are different. And these were a little bit more unique because of their design on the facets. Oops, I had one that was a little bit of a dud. Let me get that out of the way. Let's put a new one down. And every once in a while you get one that comes out like a dud. And that one was a little bit duddy. Whoops, I'm about to use my lacquer pen instead of my glue. We'll blame that on the coal to coal brain. Alright. And then I have one more area that I want to add some more to. I want it to look like raindrops. The stamp set did have a raindrop that went with it, but I figured I'd rather use the gems. Just to give it a little bit more dimension. Alright, now I'm going to go in with my lacquer pen. Oops, let me unclog it. It's a little clog. Hero Art sell these. They're really cool. It's like glossy accents. And it's clear, even though it looks white in the bottle. And that's just going to, I'm going to add to the card to make it look like their umbrellas are wet. Here we go. I'm just going to leave some design on there. And there we go. Isn't that cute? I can't really see the gloss. I'm trying to show it to you. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It's kind of hard to show in the camera. But there are the little things. Let me see if I can bring it closer so you can see those crystals. There we go. See how they got like a little chess board design to them? They're really cool. Alright, so now we're going to go on to card number two's panel. For this one, I'm also going to stamp in a sentiment. I have wishing you showers of, and you'll see what I'm going to add at the end here. And I'm going to make sure I get this really black. Sometimes that's hard on watercolor paper. Alright. So, that is done. Let me get that out of our way. And just like the first card, I'm going to actually heat emboss the last word on black cardstock. And for this, I'm using the word love. I did love the sentiments that came with this kit because they had pieces you could make different sentiments with. I love cards that do that so that you're not stuck with one sentiment all the time, but you can build your own. And for this one, I'm also using the Hero Art Silver embossing powder. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first card. I am going to die cut this out. And I do have the little love die for it. 
So let me get that done. There we go. As you can see, there's the die cut. And I'm going to, of course, adhere that to the very bottom of the card, like that. Isn't that cute? She, this is going to be just darling when it's put all together. All right. So let me get my scrap paper out so I don't glue up my mat more. I have stuff that takes off glue, but I don't want to have to pull it out every time I do it. So I always end up cleaning up my mat because <laughs> I get glue and everything all over my mat. Great way to get glue off any mat that you have. They have adhesive remover. Just spray some on it and it pulls it right off. All right. So this also, I'm going to put some craft foam below. So I'm going to get that on there. There's that. And this time, I want to remember my sentiment. And for this one, I am choosing sending happiness. Here I am. For all these, I just chose the tuxedo black ink. I didn't choose any other colors. I just wanted to keep it very simple. Oops, and I forgot the center of that sending, so let me get that in there. All right, there we go. And I did that on a polka dot, pink polka dot card form. All right, so now let's adhere this panel to our card form. sure I'm going the right way. There we go. As you see, it goes really good with her little rain jacket. And there's that card. And we're going to do this very similar to what we did. I'm going to bring in those rhinestones again. And I didn't show it in the video, but also I'm going to use the lacquer pen. Just like I did on the first one with the umbrellas. Coming in with my Ranger Multi Medium and my Precision Bottle. That's a great way to get really fine glue dots is buy yourself a Precision Bottle, put some glue in it, and then you have a fine applicator for your glue. That way you're not having to buy specialty bottles. I do find they clog up a lot. Sometimes I do, as you see the needle in the background, I have to unclog it periodically with a needle, but it's so worth it to get those fine little dots of glue down. Right, Oop, that one didn't glue very well. And sometimes I'm a little too slow putting my stuff on and I have to apply some more. But there we go. Isn't that sweet? And this is another moment with those had already dried up. That's one thing I gotta say about the Ranger Multimedium. It does dry clear, matte, but it dries fast. Sometimes faster than I can adhere gems to it, apparently, but there's that. But hey, there we go. Look at that. All right, so the last panel was the crazy panel that I did willy nilly with some dye on the mat. This one I'm gonna keep really simple. All right, and this one is the one I'm going to show you the goof up on a stamp. As you see, you'll see this when I raise it, my you and my my did not come on the stamp. And it looks like ju <laughs> or moj, <laughs> but a simple solution for this is you can either cut off that you are my and just use the sunshine. Or like I'm doing, I'm just going with a black pen and just fixing the stamp. This 
sometimes when I cut them, stamps don't come out perfect. And this was one that that happened with. And that's fine. Mistakes happen. They were offering to replace it, but I said, don't worry about it. It's only one little sentiment. And I went ahead here. The first little paper piecing that I showed you onto that. As you see, there's no mess up behind there. All right. And I'll put her right on the middle of the card. Look at that. And I decided to keep this really simple. I'm not going to put raindrops or anything on there, but I am going to put in this little thing. And I made a little mistake here. I'm going to admit to this. As I was making it, I realized it. Why did I do this? I used my lacquer pen before I put my foam panel on the back. So, of course, I have wet lacquer now on my card. And I'm also coming in, of course, with those gems, but I decided just to put it by the sentiment. Like I said, I wanted to keep this card as simple as possible. That way the background really shined through. My gem got away from me. All right, like I said, glue dried. It does happen. This time was a little faster, but it's only one. And as you think, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, oh crud, I made a mistake. So I want to do this reverse. I'm putting it on my foam, which sometimes is trickier because you can stretch out your foam. But I'm going to try to do it very carefully, not to stretch it too much as I'm applying glue to this. And I'm going to try to line this up on my card without putting the lacquer down too far. I was like, crud, I did it, the lacquer before. And I got a little on my mat, which is fine. I'll wipe it off later. But I was like, whoops, that was a bad mistake. <laughs> All right, so while we're letting this lacquer dry a little bit, I'm going to put in, we will weather this storm together. Just like I did on the first card. But this time I'm doing it inside the card. And I'm going to do that in tuxedo black ink. Just get that. Oops, maybe a second. Last one. There we go. Make sure we get that all nice and black. There we go. And I'm going to let that dry. And as you see, I got some black and gray striped cardstock for this card. I put adhesive on the back of this panel and I put a stick it on there. Really secure. Push it down, make sure that I get it really good because this paper was a little warped. That's a great thing about. Um, craft foam. If you have watercolor panels, you can adhere it and straighten your panel. All right, now on to the fall ones. So, to start, I'm going to put my sentiment in my card. I'm sorry, this is a little bit off frame here. I will try to bring this up so you can see what I'm doing in a minute. There it goes. All right, so I'm gonna do this sentiment in black tuxedo ink, and it says sending blessings. These are all from this Honeybee Stamp Seasonal Sweetings kit. Like I said, you can build multiple 
multiple messages with this kit. They have the words separated so you can build whatever sentiment you want to put into it. It's really wonderful. I think the only one that was a whole word together was the one that said, you are my sunshine. That was it. Everything else you could build your own sentiment. Um, the next video we do with the Hero Arts, that's what this kit in March is about, is about sentiments and building your own sentiment. So I wasn't sure if I was going to keep the kit when I first saw it, but as I thought about it, I said maybe building sentiments is something that's a fun way to show you can make any type of card by building your sentiment with different wordings. I just adhered the girl to the card. And now I want to glue on the cat. So I'm going to put that on my scrap paper and glue it on. And now to put the little leaves on, I'm going to just use my Ranger Multimedia mat. It's going to be too hard to put the glue on there with the roller. So we're just going to glue these little ones on with little bits of glue here. And I'm going to lay all those out. This was another card that I'm going to keep very simple. All right, let's get that glue on that leaf. That big leaf took a lot of glue, so I had to put it on very early. There we go. Make sure it's stuck down all the way. These little ones I just need a dot, but the big one needed a lot more. All right, set that on there. I was thinking I should use my pick it up tool. Pick me up tool to pick up these little leaves because they're so tiny. But there we go. And isn't that cute? All right. So now we're going to put a piece of craft foam behind it. My famous craft foam backings. Let me get my adhesive on this. And I'm going to stick this on the back. Just line up as well as we can. There we go. Get some on the back of that because we've already done our sentiment. We did that first, which was a smart choice on my behalf. So I got a little more on my mat. This poor mat's going to be covered by the time I'm done here. And I'm going to line that on that, that little zigzag yellow and orange background. I know she lifted a little bit where I didn't get some, so let's get a dot of some ranger on there. That'll hold her down. And there is this little card. Isn't that cute? Just simple but sweet. So now for the next panel. This one, I'm actually putting a sentiment on the front. And I'm choosing, it's wishing you happiness. If these lined up, then I can actually say what it is. Oops. I said you can build all kinds of different sentiments with this. Oops, I'm sorry, we're off screen a little bit here. Yes, it was wishing you happiness. I was right. I was definitely right. All right, so now I'm going to lay this out. And I'm going to start with the leaves this time, I believe. I think it will be easier that way. And then add the people after. Let me get them lined up. There we go. All right. Let's unclog our bottle and let's start gluing. All right. 
So this first leaf, of course, takes the most glue because it's such a big leaf. That on there. One thing I do enjoy about Ranger's Multimedium is the mat. Because every once in a while your glue peeks through, but on majority of papers it will not show. The one paper I did see that it shows, actually two papers, is pearl and vellum. But everything else it dries matte and clear and you don't see it. It's just, it's wonderful for that. Because most papers we use as card makers, they're matte. They're not shiny. They're not going to show anything. All right, so we're going to finish gluing these little leaves down. There's that little leaf. Got one more leaf, and then we can start putting our girl and her cat down. Of course, for those, we're going to use our tape roller. And there's the cat. All right, oops, I got actually a cat hair in the cat. Let me see if I can get this off there. That's not what we wanted to add to the card. All right. So let me adhere my craft foam to the back of this card. So I'm putting this on a kind of tartan pattern card form. Kind of gives into that autumn look. I actually made these card forms. They're fun. I love doing these pattern papers too on, for these card forms because it gives you a white surface to put your sentiment in. And I actually decided not to put a sentiment in this card because I decided I'll leave it blank. Now let's just adhere that to the card form and there's your card. All right, so for the last card, we're gonna use that freeform panel that I did with the ink splotching. And I'm going to uh, take off this. Ugh, come on, there we go. I am going to add a sentiment to the front of it. And I believe I chose Oh, I can't see what we chose. Hold on for a minute. I'll tell you in a minute what we chose. This one, I think I chose. Wishing you. Sunny days. That's what I chose. You see there, once again, that's how we can use all these little sentiment words to make a fun sentiment. All right, so once again, I'm gonna adhere our Seasonal Sweeties to the card. This time I chose to put the Seasonal Sweeties on mounting foam. That way they kind of stuck up on the card. So let me get this foam on the back of her. Just trying to lay out just enough that she stuck up but not enough that she was lined up right. There we go. Just trim this. All right. Get in there. All right, so let me remove this tape and line her up now. The leaves I'll still put on with my ranger, but for this I decided let's make them look like they're flying into the leaves. And I'm going to do the same thing with her cat. She has a mounting tape on him. He's a little bit of a smaller surface, so a little bit more cutting involved. All right. 
right, let's get a little piece for his tail. There we go. Now I'm ready to remove the backing and we'll get him placed on the card or her. I decided let's make him go up on the top more. There we go. Alright, so for, like I said, for these, I'm going to use my Ranger Multimedium. I'm not even going to... And I'm going to just put it right on the card and just stick it right on top like I do with a embellishment. It's like, why add the glue to the back of the leaf where I could just put it on there? Alright, so let's put our leaves in. I have to say to cutting these little pieces up they were actually quite easy they weren't too complicated sometimes when you get dyes with a kit they don't cut as well but I have to say honeybees dyes cut really well too all right so now that we got all the leaves adhered we're gonna put on our adhesive so we can put our foam craft foam back so that we can flatten out this watercolor panel. And I chose a kind of orangey tone polka dot pattern card form. And I'm going to put a lot of adhesive on the back of this. Oops, and I missed a corner on the card itself. All right, so now I'm going to lay this on. All right, and there's that card. Get it really simple, no sentiment inside. And so these are the six cards I made with this kit and with paper piecing. I hope you liked this video and thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.